So I just posted a video about installing something called Tiny 11 on the Surface Go 3 that has only four gigabytes of RAM. And I did in fact see a positive change in the performance of that device. My RAM usage, just idle background RAM usage, went from about three gigs down to about two. And when you only have four gigs of RAM, that's a pretty big deal. The background CPU usage also dropped fairly considerably as well. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is taking my Steam Deck, which already runs full Windows 11 Pro. By the way, Tiny 11 is Windows Pro. So if you don't have a key for Windows Pro and you install this, you're gonna need one or else you're gonna have the little watermark and you won't be able to customize the appearance the same way. I digress. My Steam Deck already runs Windows 11 Pro. We're going to get some baseline information about kind of, you know, what that background utilization is for RAM, CPU, so forth and so on. And then we're going to install Tiny 11. I'll show you how to do that. which It's very, very simple. And then we're going to check and see if it's actually made any improvements in that overall performance. Let's jump into first a quick look at where my Steam Deck is right now. So we're looking at my Steam Deck now, and yes, this is running off the deck on an external monitor, but it will make this a bit easier to be able to kind of see what's going on and just sit in your idling. We are kind of hovering around 6% for the CPU utilization. Six, there's seven, there's six again. Okay, so pretty much stable there at six. And we're using 5.3 gigabytes of the, let's just call it 12 gigs of RAM. Now I do have Steam Deck tools and all of the various uh, you know things that are involved with that running in the background, but that's pretty much it. Of course, Steam is also running. It is a Steam Deck. Of course, Steam will be running in the background. So now what we get to figure out is by installing Tiny 11, how much headroom are we going to save in particular when it comes to the RAM? But who knows, maybe even that background CPU usage will go down as it did on my Surface Go 3. All right, so to test some current performance, we are in Sons of the Forest, and this thing is uh, pretty much like the lowest possible settings imaginable, and it still does not run particularly well. We're getting, there's 30 FPS there, but it's typically under 30, 27, 31. You can kind of see how this thing is running now. The GPU utilization is somewhere in the 70s to mid 80s. CPU is actually low, only like eight or 9%, so this might be a game that is a bit CPU bound, dropping into the 20s, the teens. Performance is not, like I said, not great in this game. So it'd be interesting to see if there's any difference made by installing Tiny 11. We'll talk a bit more about what Tiny 11 is a bit later in the video, by the way. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is go and click on the first link in the description. It's gonna be to archive.org. Scroll down until you see ISO images. It'll look like this. And I'm going with the 22H2 Beta 2, no system requirement. That's just the most easy to recommend one. Again, this is Pro, you're gonna need a key. So if you have to go to G2A and buy yourself a Pro key for 20, 25 bucks, just keep that in mind. If you don't have a key, you have to buy one. I would recommend though, going with a torrent. If you have uTorrent or another torrenting application, that's gonna download so much faster, not even funny. Otherwise, it's gonna take you a while. So the next link to click is for Rufus. This is a program that will create a bootable USB drive. Scroll down and either download Rufus or the portable version. Either way, does not really matter. At this point, you can go ahead and open up Rufus. You should see your flash drive of choice there. Make sure you're using the correct drive because otherwise you might wind up losing some data. Make sure it's a drive with nothing on it that you don't mind losing, okay? So then from there, click on select and go ahead and select, of course, the ISO you just downloaded of Tiny11, which there is mine there, and then you're gonna click on start here at the bottom. You don't need to change any other setting. The pop-up that comes up, ignore it, just go on through. Go ahead and click on start and let it do its thing. When you're done, you will have a flash drive with Tiny11 already on. Now we need to move over to the Steam Deck. I forgot to mention that through this process, when it first boots in, I forgot to mention that through this process, if you're not like me using an external monitor, your Steam Deck will have its display rotated, okay? Because this panel is not natively going to be in this uh, orientation, but it's not a big deal. Once you get into Windows, you go into your display settings, make sure you've selected your Steam Deck display and set orientation to landscape, and you should be just fine from there. All right, so here is my Steam Deck in my JSOX dock. You can see my flash drive back there in the back. And from here, what you're gonna do is hold down your power, I'm sorry, your volume up, 
And while you're holding that, you're going to hit your power button. The little light comes on, you hear the little beep. When that happens, let go of the power button, continue holding the volume up until you see something pop up on the screen. I'm going to see if I can do this with one hand. And of course, this is going to pop up on my external monitor here in just a moment because that is also plugged into all this. And that should be what we are looking at. So we're going to go over to Boot Manager and hit Enter. Now, I am using an external keyboard. This may also make things easier for you. Let's hit Enter there. And then what, we, what do we have here? Windows Boot Manager, okay, USB device flash drive. That's the one that we need. So let's hit Enter on that. You can see here that Setup is now starting. Just be patient for this process. And then eventually you will wind up on this screen here. So let's kind of go through this as quickly as we can. We're going to click on Next. We're going to tick the little box there. So now you're looking at the partitions on the device. I'm going to do this as a clean install because I like deleting all the things that I set up in the past. And I guess, you know, I'm a masochist or something. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of these partitions. If you're coming from SteamOS, you're going to be doing this. If you're uh, already on Windows 11, this is probably the simplest way to do it as well. Just make sure it says unallocated space and we're going to click on next and it will begin uh, copying those files first and then going through the installation. Once it finishes that part, you're going to be on a screen that looks something like this for quite a while. And this part might take a decent amount of time getting ready and all sorts of these things, but eventually you will wind up on the screen to set up Windows. We'll jump ahead to that part. And that's where we are now. So there's not much that's like super exciting about this portion of the video. This is pretty much just your standard Windows setup process. You're going to be going through your keyboards, connecting to Wi-Fi. One big difference here is that you don't actually have to have an online account signed in to go through this process. It will set you up by default with a local account. So that is pretty interesting and that's definitely something I think a lot of us can get on board with. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead until we are at our desktop though. So we are up and running. The first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and download and install any updates that are available. Now one thing you're gonna also have to do is go to the Microsoft Store and install a web browser because this Tiny 11 is so stripped down all of these things that have been removed from it to make it run smoother, to have less overhead, less you know, demands in terms of the hardware, the browser is included in that. So you have to go to the store and download a browser. But like I said first, I'm going to get these updates all installed and rebooted, and then we'll go from there. And while all that is happening on my device in real time here next to me, I'm going to take a second and talk about what Tiny11 actually is. And I kind of hinted at it to some degree there already. It is Windows 11 Pro with all of the extra stuff that you might not need removed from it. Everything from Solitaire to Phone Link to the Xbox stuff, it's all stripped out of it. Now, the beautiful thing is you can go to the Microsoft Store and piecemeal install that stuff if you need it. If you want OneDrive back, if you want OneNote back, go download it manually, but it's not going to be there at the start. And by virtue of doing this, removing so many services, but keeping the thing totally intact and still running, it's none of the extra stuff that you might not need you're going to have a device that just doesn't need nearly as much RAM to run, and it can potentially run with less resource being used in the background in general. Like I said on my Go, my Surface Go 3, even the background, just the baseline usage of the CPU went from about 14% or so, somewhere over 10% just sitting there, to somewhere around 6 or 7% just sitting there. That's not a crazy amount, but it is definitely something. So once all that's done, all your Windows updates are completed, you're going to jump to the next link in the description and scroll down, and you're going to download each of these things. Download them one at a time, and then install them. These are your drivers, okay? Now the next thing you're going to do is go to the next link in the description. This part is optional, but I would highly recommend it. We've got to install something called Steam Deck Tools. If you want to see a full video on Steam Deck Tools, I'll drop a link below to that as well. It is a fantastic program. Definitely want to install it. Just scroll down and you're looking for setup, download that, 
install it, you're good to go. There's also going to be another program you're probably going to need if you go back up to Steam Deck Tools and then you scroll down and look for a performance overlay. There's a program called Rivatuner Statistics Server. You're probably going to want to go download that as well just so you can have an overlay for your performance in games. Get all that stuff installed. Again, full video for that down below. Okay, so after a lot of work to get this thing fully set back up again, we are looking at my Steam Deck again, now running Tiny 11. And if we look at the CPU usage there, we seem to be hovering right around four. There's five, sometimes it says seven, but usually four and five percent. Now, if I'm remembering correctly from earlier, it was usually like 6% before. So a very slight drop in CPU usage potentially there, although it's not quite as stable. Some things may be going on in the background. Some things may still not be totally settled. What about RAM? RAM usage is down to 3.3 gigabytes of the 11.8, let's call it 12, before we were at 5.3 gigabytes. We have reclaimed two full gigabytes of RAM. Now, I do not know what effect this is going to have on the performance of games. We're going to find that out right now because I'm going to fire up the same game that we did before, Sons of the Forest, and let's see what it does. Now, unfortunately, this game does not appear to have cloud saves, so I had to start over, but luckily, it actually put me at the exact same starting point. So I'm just going to run over to the beach that I was on before and uh, we should be able to quickly get a comparison. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I'm running at a higher frame rate. Uh, there's obviously going to still be some hitches, some places where it's dipping down. But I'm at 30 plus FPS right now. 34, 35. This is absolutely running better than it was before. This is the same beach that we were on. The same settings, both are both were using native resolution. Okay, they were dropped into the 20s, back up to 30 again. And this does appear to me, now we're up into the mid-30s again. This does appear to me, you can see the frame rate on that corner, so I don't have to keep saying this. But this does appear to me to be running at least a little bit better. Am I saying that this is some massive improvement in terms of frame rate? No, but we were not seeing 40 at all before. We just saw 40 FPS. Let me look at this rock real close. I bet we can get up over 40. There we go, 42, 44. I don't have my um, refresh rates installed on this thing, so I'm still able to get all the way up to 60 hertz. But still, guys, this unequivocally feels better to me. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that by doing this, every game that you install is suddenly going to run, oh, there's a big hitch there, is suddenly going to run better, that you're going to gain, you know, 5, 6, 7% performance in every game. I've only tested this on this one game just now. I'll be doing more testing later. But what I can tell you is that in this one game, the performance is better, and the task manager backs this up. You have more free RAM, and you have a CPU that's idling a bit lower. I would love to see more people that like have a bigger selection of games and benchmarking tools check this out and do their own tests because that's just not me. Hopefully some of you guys can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, if you thought this was useful, hit that subscribe button before you leave. I'll see you on the next one, guys. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.